Principle 5. Rewrite the past. The difference between false memories and true ones is the same as the for shovels. It is always the false ones that look uh, the most real, the most brilliant. Salvador Dalí. I remember waking up one day with a symphony uh, with a symphony in my head. Um, I had dreamed that I was sitting at my desk composing and I woke up with the result intact. Beaming with prey, I ran to my brother. Listen to it, I said, uh, and began humming um, a few bars. Isn't that awesome? I composed, I composed it in my sleep. No, you didn't, my brother replied. It's from the Superman movie. We saw it last week. Whoa, <laughs> so sad. So, um, as we discussed earlier, uh, a memory is just a web of connections. Disparate neurons fire together, wire together, and become more likely to fire together in the future. In my dream, I remember the, um, the Superman uh, team at the same time as I uh, envisioned myself composing. My brain uh, reflect reflexively. My brain reflexively connected the two into a convincing new memory, a false memory, and I went and embraced, uh, embarrassed myself, embraced myself, embraced myself uh, in front of my brother. This happens to all of us, and it is a result of the way we store memories. In a 2011 memory study, uh, researchers showed two groups of college students a uh, vivid um, imaginary Latin advertisement for a new fake brand of popcorns, Orville uh, Rennenbacher uh, Government Fresh. Okay. <laughs> afterward, um, afterward uh, they Thanked, thanked the um, they thanked the first group and sent them home. Then they gave the second group samples of fresh popcorn, and week later they brought uh, brought uh, both groups back and asked them about their impressions. Here's where it gets creepy. Both groups vividly remember trying the, the popcorn and uh, even through one group never had. Whoa. <laughs> the all fruit it was delicious. When we remember when when we remember we don't just access our memories, we rewrite them. Prompted, uh, prompted by the popcorn advertisement, these college students remember the movie nights at home, the smell of corn and butter, the crunch in their mouth and the salt on their lips. In the midst, in the midst of re relive, uh, relieving these experiences. They saw images of other people enjoying popcorn in bags market or while Orwell uh, ran back her uh, gourmet, fresh, gourmet fresh and their memories changed. The, the network of neurons from past movie from past movie nights activated at the at the same time as they saw the friends logo. 
Because neurons that fire together wire together, their brains store these new connections as if they had always been there. Our single memory uh, are am amalgamations of every recall experience we've ever had. When I remind when I remind you, when I remind you of the word gato, you probably recall the little image of a cat from earlier in this in the chapter. But uh, as that image floats around in your head, you can store it just as it was. You are a different person now with different information in your head and a different section of this book in front of you. Perhaps you changed rooms or your emotional state or perhaps you know you uh, now have a cat in your lap. You have a wholly um, wholly new set of neurons uh, involved in this gut experience compared with uh, your last one. As a result, your new gut memory will join the new connections from your present to the old reactivated connections from your past. In that single act of recall, your gato network has double in size. This uh, re rewriting process is the um, um, is the um, ancient ancient um, ancient um, behind long-term memorization. Every act of recall involves uh, old memories. Um, with trace of your present days of your present day self. This trace gives those memories additional connection, new images, motions, sounds and word associations that make your old memory easier to recall. Once you have uh, rewritten these memories enough times uh, enough times, they become unforgettable. Feedback to the rescue. Of course, you must remember a memory before you can rewrite it. You will remember American Express don't leave, don't leave home without it. To your uh, dying day, because American Express has spent millions of dollars making its ads memorable. Every time you see a, a, a new American Express ad, the vivid emotions and sounds are rewritten into your memory of their all-important slogan. You will forget their slogan within um, each commercial cycle if they eliminated the famous actors and uh, imaginary laden, uh, laden uh, troubles scenarios from their ad, from the ads. Uh, if this happened, the crucial uh, crucial rewriting process will never occur. Don't leave home without it. Will become just another forgotten advertisement, uh, rather than one of the most successful ad campaigns in history. In practice and recall, we are striving to continuously rewrite our memories. We create a memory for Gato and we build uh, upon that memory with uh, rec every recall until it is unforgettable as, an, as a slogan. But what happens? When we can't remember, surely we won't be able to remember everything we learn 
particularly if we are trying to wait as long as possible between practice sessions. The day may come when we try to remember Gato and draw a blank instead. Uh, we've forgotten the word, we have forgotten the word, and it is, uh, and in this asthma, uh, and this, and in this scenario, uh, it will stay forgotten. Like, Evan has uh, while the walk, uh, will uh, be able to learn it faster in future. But we won't get any benefits from our practice. We need a way to restore our forgotten memories and we'll uh, find, find it uh, in immediate feedback. Feedback is a simple concept with dramatic results if we encounter it, our gato flashcard and get stamped. Uh, then we can simply look um, at the back side of the card and see the picture of a cat. We have just given ourselves immediate feedback and as a result one of, of two things happens. If our memory of Gato has vanished um, then we start over. We form a new original experience at the moment we got stumped a look at the answer. This is not as good as remembering our actual original experience, but it's still very effective. Our brains are primed and ready to create a new memory. As we search our our memories for gato related images and associations we built a wide network of neural connections we may remember that gato is a type of animal but can't remember which one if we uh, encounter uh, encounter the um, an image of a cat while these connections are still active our complete network will burst into activity and the reward centers of our brains will activate and will um, have a new deep and memorable experience to build upon. Alter alternatively, we may still have access to our original memory of Gato. This memory will burst into life, oh yeah. At the moment, we see that picture of a cat. In this scenario, we'll relieve our memory, our new experience will shine it, and the memory will be rewritten with personal connections. Thanks to a simple act of immediate feedback, immediate feedback, and we regain our reward. Feedback allows us to resuscitate uh, forgotten memories and get the most out of our practice lessons. So, key points. Every time you successfully recall a memory, uh, you, revisit, you revisit and rewrite um, earlier experiences, adding bits, and pieces of your present self to your past memories. You will make the best use of your time when practicing recall if your uh, earlier experience, uh, experiences are as memorable as possible. You can accomplish this by connecting sounds, images, and personal connections to every word you learn. When you do forget, use immediate, immediate feedback to bring back your forgotten memories.